Okay, good morning, Year 11 13, and welcome to the live assembly this morning. Uh, I will try my best to talk you through the processes as far as we know them uh, between now and the end of this current academic year. And thank you for the questions that you've submitted uh, over the weekend. I will try and answer those. If there are any questions that arise during the presentation, uh, I will try and answer those when I email you the results and the uh, feedback from the question later on today. Okay, so let's talk a little bit through the timeline between now and the end of the year. Uh, and hopefully you've already received a copy of this through email. So we're looking forward to seeing you back on site from the 8th. And obviously the first thing we will do will be go to our testing center that is uh, on site in the sports hall and <coughs> uh, undertake the COVID test. So first week back will be a week where we are just reintegrating you into school and uh, you socializing again with your friends. Uh, and also uh, you'll find out more about uh, what's coming up in terms of assessment over the next couple of months. So you'll be receiving feedback as we go. Uh, there are two assessment windows that we've defined uh, in March and in May. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the content of those in a minute. So in terms of the end of term, uh, there hasn't been government guidance on this, but we've decided that uh, just before the, uh, the May half term is when uh, teaching will finish for year 11, 13. So 28th of May, uh, we're looking to plan a celebration event for you and then you are done uh, for that point in time. Uh, this will allow us after uh, the May bank, uh, the May half term rather, to uh, do moderation and marking and make sure that uh, we've done all necessary checks uh, before we upload grades to the exam boards by the 18th of June. Uh, year 11 into 12 induction, for those of you that are staying with us in the sixth form, is the 28th of June. Uh, and results days are in August, the 10th and 12th. Uh, and Founders Day is still a, a, a to be confirmed. Uh, we've penciled in that date, that's what we have booked uh, with the church. But this is also when, uh, it we, you know, when the dates weren't quite as they were. So we'll go back and review that in due course. Okay, so telling you a little bit more about uh, what assessment looks like, because really most of the questions were concerns around uh, assessment. So the idea is exams are cancelled uh, and the you'll be building up, instead of sitting uh, formal exams, uh, you'll be looking at an evidence portfolio. So here we will be looking at producing uh, at least five, but no more than seven pieces of assessed work. Uh, and they may be pieces that you've already undertaken over the last uh, 18 months. So each faculty will need to choose the assessments that are specific to that subject that reflects what's covered in the course. And that's kind of the crucial thing, that uh, we are choosing topics that we are confident that you have uh, been taught and that you understand and, and know well. And that will vary clearly by subject. So it's not possible to come up with a blanket statement of saying, um, here is what's on the assessments uh, at a whole school level. It'll be each faculty, each subject will decide this. So as I've said, this will include work or uh, assessments that you've done to date and uh, some of the assessments still to come. Uh, you'll be told which assessments will be used in each subject. So it'll be quite clear uh, in the evidence portfolio uh, what data points we'll be using. You'll know that in advance. If you han have non-exam assessment, uh, if you have uh, coursework or practical performance, uh, this will be included. Uh, it doesn't need to be fully complete, uh, given uh, the recognition that we've lost time uh, during this year. Uh, but what you have done and achieved will be marked and used as part of the assessment uh, portfolio. Uh, note that art and photography are entirely portfolio-based, uh, so no exams. And for BTEX, uh, it's operating similar to GCSEs and A-levels. There won't be an exam, uh, but you will need to complete the units uh, that are necessary for each course to be able to be certified. Uh, so the assessments that are coming uh, in uh, March and in May uh, will be shorter, so they'll fit inside uh, a normal lesson time or a normal double for year 13. Uh, they will be topic-focused. Uh, we will be able to share with you in advance what topics uh, are coming up uh, to help you with revision. Uh, and there will be a mix of past paper questions. They could be sections of past papers, for instance. It could be uh, you know, a, a half a past paper or a quarter of a past paper. Uh, or they could be new questions. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about that when I get to the Q&A. Um, these will be marked by your teachers and that you will get feedback upon them. So really what we're talking about is transparency. You will know uh, which assessments form your portfolio. Uh, you will get feedback as you go along how you're doing. 
So really, I guess what I'm saying is that it's still all to play for, uh, that you still have a chance to uh, make a strong impact upon the grade that you'll be awarded at the end of this process. But your final grade will have to be based upon this evidence. Uh, we can't pluck a grade from the sky. We can't just give you a nine because you're a nice person. It needs to be based upon evidence. So each of the assessments may carry a slightly different weight, uh, and the ones closer to the end of the course might count for more than uh, the ones that you did in, say, year 10 or year 12, uh, or the shorter homework or remote learning tasks that you might have been doing over the last uh, number of weeks. So as an example, and these aren't real examples yet because our heads of department have yet to meet to uh, discuss this and agree the exact composition of the portfolio, uh, you'll have to forgive us on that because we only found out about this the same time as you did last Thursday. But over the coming uh, week or two, we'll be able to be more precise about this. But an example in subject A might be that uh, there was a mock undertaken in year 11 in November, and that will count. And then the March and May assessments will be two more data points. But it might be that you uh, did a test at the end of year 10, or you might have done a test during lockdown that might uh, also count. Uh, subject B might uh, be more uh, where we don't have a, a mock, but there was uh, an essay that you undertook uh, under control conditions or a, a formal essay. That might form part of it. It might be homework that you did uh, over the, uh, the lockdown period. It might be that you did some modular tests in September, October. They may count. So that mix will be, again, up to the subject leaders to decide. And then finally, uh, a example of where there might be coursework involved, so the non-examined assessment will form part of the portfolio. There might be practicals as well, so say something like in uh, P or drama or music where you have performance-based practical, and it might be that uh, there may be some theory uh, assessments that happen uh, during, during May or during uh, this last two-week period. So um, that's about as uh, precise as it can be at the moment until the heads of department have managed to work out for their subject what's the right mix. Okay, so over to your questions. Uh, and uh, I've tried to be uh, as comprehensive in the answers to these as possible. I know that there was a lot of, I assume via WhatsApp, there was a lot of misinformation flying around uh, on Friday and over the weekend because a number of you have emailed me directly as well with questions. So hopefully this clears up some of the misassumptions that might have been made about what's happening. Uh, it really isn't exams by the back door. Um, you know, the, what we'll be doing during assessments are shorter topic-focused tests uh, where we can guide you in advance uh, in what's being covered. <clears throat> they will be based upon past paper questions or, or potentially new questions that the exam boards are going to write over the, the coming few weeks. Uh, so the smartest thing that you can do in the meantime is to practice the past paper questions. Uh, if you get good at those and uh, use the mark schemes, then chances are that uh, they may come up in these, uh, these assessments. Um, you will have covered all the material to be able to answer those. We won't ask you, unlike a normal exam where it's completely random uh, what could be asked from the specification, we have the choice and be able to compose these papers and we won't ask you anything that you haven't been taught or covered. Uh, so those two windows uh, are March, as I said, and the end of May. Uh, we will gather more of this evidence. And just in case you think you're being hard done by at Hitchin Boys School, um, I know of other Hertfordshire schools that are doing full series of GCSE and A-levels in the hall with invigilation, full length exam papers. Um, so that to me sounds like exams weren't cancelled, so our approach is significantly different to that. Uh, you have lost learning time, yes, we understand this, uh, and we are sorry for that, and you know, I have to say that this is not the year that we would have hoped, or not the two years we would have hoped for you, uh, in terms of uh, the experience that you've had of, of learning. Um, but you have had high quality remote learning since January, and not every school in the country has had that. Um, so as I said earlier, each subject leader will identify between five and seven assessments that will review only what's been taught. Uh, and you will be able to be supported by things like formula sheets in maths and science, so you're not having to rote learn uh, formula, etc. You'll be able to use those in the in-class assessments. Um, why are you using the exam board materials? Aren't these just mock exams? No, um, that's a misunderstanding of what's being produced. So what we expect the exam boards to produce before Easter is basically a question bank that will be organized by topic or by module, and the teachers will then have a range of questions to choose from. They could be existing past paper questions. It might be questions from the old specifications that are still relevant, and there will be a small amount of new material in there as well that you won't have seen before. Uh, the, the re main reason to use these is that the exam boards will be providing mark schemes and exemplar work, 
and great descriptors to the teachers that says this is what a six looks like, this is what a grade B looks like. And this is crucial because this year we won't be having a centralized system to determine grade boundaries uh, that's set by the exam board. So as you probably know normally, grade boundaries are set based upon national performance and then standardized. Uh, clearly, given this is happening in individual schools, that won't be possible. So in order to have any consistency nationally to work out what a grade six is, we have to use these materials to support us in doing that. <coughs> These questions will have been road tested and checked by chief examiners uh, and they will be um, given a mark scheme uh, to go with it. And likewise, if you decide to appeal, uh, it'll be much simpler if the assessments that you've sat uh, have been originated by that exam board. They'll be familiar with those, so they'll be able to check pretty quickly if we as teachers have interpreted the mark scheme correctly uh, and they'll decide to either support our grade or change the grade uh, if they disagree with us. Uh, so, unfortunately, the, the, quest, the questions that I've talked about, the safeguards that I've talked about to ensure the integrity uh, of, of these uh, questions um, don't apply when it comes to the textbook or unit tests on Caboodle or whatever. They may form part of the evidence, but we do need to make sure that we're using evidence that uh, has got some consistency nationally. Um, we want them, these uh, qualifications to have integrity, and we want to make sure that uh, what you've been assessed on is something that has worth and has relevance. Okay, uh, there's a few of you said, but we weren't listened to. You didn't ask us what we wanted. Um, well, I'm sorry, that's not the way things work. Um, there were 100,000 responses to the consultation uh, nationally and all sorts of different viewpoints from students, from parents, from teachers, etc. Uh, the government has set a clear direction. I may not completely agree with it, but ultimately now this is what we have to work within. Um, we are, on the upside, being trusted as students and teachers to come up with this process that fairly reflects what you know and what you can do and the priority now at this stage is to get you to the next stage in your education, whatever that might be. So if you didn't get exactly what you wanted, um, that unfortunately, guys, is democracy. Um, not everybody has an equal vote. Um, but a few of you said, well, we've been assessed so much already. Yeah, well, to some extent, yes, I understand. You've been doing lots of unit tests and things like that. But we don't have a vast amount of robust data. So uh, year 10 and 12 uh, exams were cancelled at the end of last year. Uh, year 11 have only done one paper in just English, math, science. So again, there's not uh, much data for mocks there. And year 13, you've done no formal mocks at all this year. So in reality, we don't have an awful lot of data, even though you may have had uh, you know, tests and, and unit tests and things uh, in individual subjects. So we need this uh, robust evidence to make sure the recommendations are fair. This is to protect you and backed up by good quality evidence. Um, we can't pluck grades in the air, uh, it's too subjective. We need to be objective and make sure when we're giving you a grade, it's based upon the evidence that we have. This is also to make sure that the qualifications that, we, uh, that you end up receiving have got legitimacy. You don't want people uh, in future years to say, oh well, they had an easy ride, the teachers just made up the grades. We just can't do that. We've got to have the evidence to back up these judgments uh, and make sure that the grades that you get are considered to be real and useful in future life. What about my mental health? Yes, I understand uh, none of us are feeling exactly uh, too positive at the moment during uh, lockdown, it's been hard. Um, but I would say there is good stress and bad stress. Uh, and good stress is something that's natural uh, when you're coming up to something important, so something like a job interview or exams or a house move or whatever. Uh, and this can be channeled to help you, uh, keep you motivated and to increase effort. And a number of the year 11s I've been speaking to you in person this week during the interviews have said, actually, that's what they really needed was uh, to come to school to increase their effort and motivation. And it still is all to play for in terms of lifting your, your grade based on the next few months. Uh, but bad stress can happen, and this is when uh, it, it becomes overwhelming and affects your physical well-being. Um, the next few months will be challenging, but I'm afraid um, saying my mental health will not avoid uh, having to produce uh, assessment data that supports our judgments. This is something that we need to do. Um, you should expect this. It's going to be a challenging couple of months and face it. Um, it won't be the last exam or the last assessment that you ever do in your career. Uh, but please, if you are struggling, please do reach out for help. Uh, we've done lots during lockdown and over the last uh, year around mental health. Uh, please speak to your form tutor, your head of year. Uh, we do have our counselling staff on board to help uh, or use the wealth of resources and uh, places to speak to on hitchandboys.co.uk. Uh, none of you have decried having assessments during this time, but it is simple. We simply don't have enough information to be able to meet the government's requirements to allocate your grade. 
Um, we've spread this as much as possible, so uh, there is nothing in the first week back, and we have six weeks in between the two assessment windows for revision that will be supported by your teachers. So a sufficient gap there. It won't be wall-to-wall -wall assessment when you return to us. Um, will we have study leave? Uh, for year 11, the simple answer is no. Uh, you missed enough in-person school uh, already this year. Uh, year 11 will have supported revision in your lessons while we ensure that you don't have too many assessments in one day by sharing a calendar with you and your teachers uh, so you know exactly what's uh, happening. Um, you do need to be in school full time. Uh, year 13 will lead to attend registrations, so in person if you're in school for session one, um, or virtual if you're not, uh, and we'll review this at Easter to see how we go. Uh, you'll only need to be in school for your lessons for this period, so you can undertake study at home uh, during periods when you don't have lessons. However, we hope that you will use the study spaces that we'll provide for you. Uh, some social contact will help your well-being, and some uh, supported and peer-assisted group study uh, can be helpful at this time, because you've been at home by yourselves enough. Um, however, this will be your choice uh, up until the review point at Easter when we'll see how we're getting on. Uh, distractions at home can be an issue, so potentially being at school might limit those distractions and make revision more effective. How will I know the assessments will be fair? So they will be checked and double checked and triple checked. So the teachers will submit the proposed grades and evidence to be checked by the heads of the department. I'm afraid the government have told us specifically that we cannot share the final grade that we're proposing for you. Uh, but we will be transparent with you about the portfolio and about your progress uh, as we go along during this process. But the final grade needs to remain confidential until results day because it could well be changed uh, due to exam board review or appeals. Um, the senior leadership team will carefully check the whole school results, uh, make, looking for any anomalies and make sure that uh, those are checked with teachers. And myself as head of centre, I'll make sure that I they ensure that the results are credible. Uh, they're within the normal range of what we'd expect at Hitchin Boys. Uh, they're not grossly inflated or deflated. They'll probably be quite similar to 2020 is the guidance that uh, we've been given. And to reassure you, those results were record results for Hitchin Boys School last year. So uh, there's every reason to be optimistic. Uh, exam boards will quality assure and sample uh, random schools just to double check we're doing this correctly. And uh, as I said, you'll receive uh, uh, guidance on your working act grade as you go along uh, and the assessments that are in the evidence portfolio will be uh, quite clear too. So there should be no surprises by the time we get to uh, results day. Uh, there is an appeals mechanism, the two possible routes for appeal. One is that we made a clerical error. We've just uploaded the wrong uh, grade or the exam board have made a mistake at their end and that will be very quickly rectified. Um, if you are still are not happy with that though, uh, there is a process to go to the exam board and we submit the evidence to them and our judgment and our marking and they review that and they may change it if they deem necessary. But I'd say that's pretty unlikely, so uh, don't hang on for this as a kind of uh, get out of jail card. Um, the exam boards will not be remarking anything, they'll just be making sure the evidence we've used uh, is robust and that we've applied the mark schemes correctly. Um, uh, finally, if you are not happy with the outcome, uh, there are sittings available in the autumn term to prove what you can do in a real formal exam. What about cheating? Um, well, the best way to uh, improve your grades is to revise the content and practice the past paper questions. And as I've said, many of the upcoming assessments uh, will be based upon questions you've already encountered. So look at the mark schemes, try to improve your answers. Uh, there will be some new questions, uh, but they'll be re relatively small in number and they'll be in a similar style to those that have gone before. Trying to gain an advantage by sharing questions or answers with those yet to sit the test or using phones, whatever, it, in classrooms to cheat is a very serious issue. You won't all be sitting in the same assessment at exactly the same time, so there is that possibility you might try and pass information to colleagues in uh, other classes. Uh, please don't do that. Uh, the school could be investigated for malpractice, and that puts everyone's grades in doubt. You could potentially be disbarred from uh, sitting that qualification. Uh, it could lead to exclusion as well uh, if you are caught cheating. Um, same as it would be in any public exams. And by the way, year 11, I'm not impressed by those year 11s that uh, we've already caught cheating in the remote uh, English uh, language GCSE that we sat uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, but accessing mark schemes that should have been private and cutting and paste those into the answers was just an act of idiocy, frankly. Um, so you will be dealt with once we return to school, uh, and this assessment cannot be included in your portfolio, but this is a warning to anybody else that thinks that this is a good idea. Please don't, we have to have uh, a fair uh, system with integrity, and anybody that breaches that will be dealt with harshly. 
So as I've said, term will finish on the 20th of May with a celebration event, um, and this is to allow teachers time to mark and moderate in time for the 18th of June. I'd ask you to have some consideration for your teachers. Uh, they've also found it difficult teaching from home. Everything takes twice or three times as long to prepare uh, and having to mark very much more than normal in the summer term because normally public exams will be marked by external examiners but unfortunately our teachers are going to have to do this. Uh, they need this time. Um, so Year 11's joining us in sixth form. We'll have an induction the week beginning the 28th of June uh, where you'll have tasters in your chosen subjects and bridging and summer work will be set. Year 13 will have access to optional supercurricular work in that subject uh, that will bridge the way to university or further study. Uh, we will provide some general materials on um, study skills, on uh, conducting research, uh, on managing away from home, etc. Uh, but all of this will be optional. Um, as I said, Founders Day, uh, it's, it's penciled in for the 2nd of July. We might try and bring that forward, but it does depend on the availability of the church to host us and also what the government restrictions are around large gatherings at that time, but more on that in the future. Okay, just finishing off now. Um, so next steps are we're returning to school on the 8th of March for COVID testing. Uh, this will be by form group. Uh, so we will email you with a time uh, when to go to the sports centre for testing. And if you test negative, uh, you will go straight to your lessons at that point. Uh, teachers will guide you over the coming weeks as to what's coming up in the first assessment window and the second assessment window when we know more from the exam boards about uh, what's coming up. Um, Final message to you is to be optimistic. Uh, we will look after you and support you and to help you build the best evidence portfolio that you can. But I hope you appreciate that all of our judgments have to be based on this evidence and that's what we'll be gathering over the next couple of months. I'm sure you, like I, were inspired by uh, the NASA Mars Perseverance rover uh, landing on Mars recently. It's incredible we've managed to send a car-sized uh, vehicle to Mars and land it safely. And I'm not sure if you noticed, but the parachute uh, that was used to uh, slow down the descent of the Mars rover uh, had a hidden message in it. And obviously me being a creative science geek, um, it is encoded in binary and in ASCII. Um, but what that hidden message is, is the motto for the uh, NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory. And when you look at the pattern on the, uh, the parachute, it says, dare mighty things. And that's what I'd ask you to do over the next few months. Dare to be brave, dare to be bold. We'll support you. Good luck.